Hello! In this video we're going to look at an application of the law of cosines. And it's a cool application, um, hopefully quite realistic for you. <laughs> Alright, so this comes from the book uh, Analytic Trigonometry with Applications by Barnett, Ziegler, and Bailene, the 11th edition. Just look in their law of cosines uh, section, you'll find it. So what they have here is a tunnel right there. There's your hydroelectric uh, uh, power tunnel. And um, it's going to go from one reservoir of water to another reservoir of water. And the distance from the top of the mountain to the lower end is 5.32 miles here. And then the distance from the top of the mountain, uh, I'm sorry, from the top of the mountain to the upper end is 2.63. So those would be, you know, relatively easy to measure in real life, that kind of thing. And then they give you some angles from the horizontal, 42.7, 48.8. All right, so then they ask you, what is the length of this tunnel? And then they ask you, what angle does the tunnel make with the horizontal? And let me just show you that because they're using those squared horizontal, it's incredibly important, right? So you've got a horizontal here, right? This is a horizontal. You've also got a horizontal right here. Okay, that's a horizontal. All right, so you have this. And so when they say in part B, what angle does the tunnel make with the horizontal? What they're asking for is, this right here, and we're going to call it theta, all right? So I want to know this angle, which is right here, all right, right there, all right? Okay, now, before we start out, I just want to uh, remind you about something from uh, geometry, where essentially, if you have two parallel lines, it doesn't matter, oops, boy, that's pretty bad, that, that doesn't look very parallel at all, does it? <laughs> Let me just start over on that one. <laughs> I gotta draw better than that, right? All right, so if you have two parallel lines, all right, and then some kind of transverse, alternating interior angles are the same, right? So that's the same, and these two are the same. Now, of course, it wouldn't matter if I had parallel lines like that and a transverse. This alternating interior would be the same, and then here, alternating interior would be the same. But you wanna keep this in mind. I like to think of it as kind of a Z, right? So you have like a Z, these are interior, right? Or maybe your Z is like that, and these are the same. So you want to look for stuff like that. We're going to use that in this problem in particular, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and start the problem. I just wanted you to refresh your memory about that so you could recognize it as we're working through the problem. All right, so now let's take this and let's represent it with triangle, right? That's what we want to do. And so here's our basic triangle. It's going to go like here, right, here, and here. Right, that's our basic triangle. Obviously, it is not a right triangle. So let's go ahead and draw this out. So you have something like, like that, where you have the horizontal they give you. Here's 42.7 degrees, 48.8 degrees. This is 2.63 miles. This is 5.32 miles. And what they first want to know is this tunnel. So we'll just call it T. What is this length here? So now, if I want to know that, this one's not too bad to kind of just say, okay, if I want to know this, I wish I knew what this angle, because this angle forms this side. Now let's see, let's say we didn't know this came from the chapter in Law of Cosines, right? And we'd say, okay, this angle forms this side. Can I find that angle? Uh, yeah, because I know that this this is a line, so this is 180 degrees, therefore all three of these have to add up to 180, and I know two of them, so I can figure out this middle one. But if I wanted to try to, to use law of sines, I'd have to say, okay, I know that angle, I can find it easily, this angle forms this side, but now I have to know either this angle forms that side or this angle forms that side, and I don't know either one of these two angles, and it's going to take me some work to find it. So I'm like, eh, I don't think I want to use a law of cosines, or law of sines on that, right? I don't want to use law of sines. So then I say, well, what about law cosines? Well, law cosines says, here's my angle, right? It's forming this side. So this squared is equal to this squared plus this squared minus two times this times this cosine of that. And I can find this pretty easily. So I'm gonna use law cosines, right? That's how I would think through that. All right, so now let's find this angle, 180 minus 42.7 degrees minus 48.8 degrees is 88.5 degrees, okay? 
So I know that now that this is 88.5 degrees, and now I can finally set up my law of cosines, right? And it's gonna be t squared, right? So this angle forms that side. So t squared is equal to this squared plus this squared minus two times this, this cosine of that. So let's write it all out. 5.32 squared plus 2.63 squared minus two times 5.32 times 2.63 cosine of 88.5 degrees. All right, so now this is pretty easy to solve at this point. You're gonna do what? You're gonna take a square root, right? So t is equal to the square root of all this stuff. Now write it out. Just remember that when you put this in, right, that you're in degree mode because that angle's in degree. And when you do that, you're gonna get that, let's take a look here, you're gonna get that T is 5.87 miles, okay? So that's the tunnel. All right, so that's part A right here. What's the length of the tunnel? 5.87 miles, okay? So now we know T equals 5.87 miles, all right? Now, the second question they ask you is, well, okay, but what angle does the tunnel make with the horizontal? And remember, that's this angle, not the one inside the triangle. So what I'm gonna have to do, let me fill this in. We know this is 88.5, and we now know that this is 5.87, all right? We need to find this, which I'll call beta, right? Now, here's where that Z thing comes in with the alternating interior angles when you have parallel lines. Remember, these are parallel lines, and here's my transverse line here. That means this angle and this angle are the same. All right, so let me kind of draw that out. So remember, from here I have and this, which means that this angle and this angle are the same, which is 42.7 degrees, all right? Which means that this whole thing, let's get a different uh, color. This whole thing is 42.7 degrees, which means that um, if I can find beta, which I should be able to find because I have almost everything else in this triangle, if I can find beta, then I just subtract it from 42.7 and that'll give me theta, the angle that the tunnel makes with the horizontal. So now you have a choice and you say to yourself, all right, um, how am I gonna find beta? So you could either use law of sines or law of cosines. So we'll do it using law of sines and then I've already done it out using law of cosines. But here I would say this angle forms this side as for example, uh, this angle forms that side. All right, so let's set it up. We have sine of beta, which I'm looking for, forms 2.63 as sine of 88.5 degrees forms 5.87, right? 88.5 forms 5.87 miles, right? That's what we just found. All right, now we're just into the algebra and stuff, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by 2.63, right? And so I'll have sine of beta equals 2.63 times sine 88.5 degrees over 5.87, right? And they're here, you're gonna get um, sine of beta equals 0 0.44789. And so beta is the inverse sine of 0 0.44789. And you're in degree mode, so just stay there. And you're gonna get 26, oh, I'm sorry, 26 point six degrees. <laughs> and remember, we said that we want theta. So if beta is 26.6 and this whole thing is 42.7, so to find theta, we're gonna have 42.7 degrees minus 26.6 degrees gives me 16.1 degrees. So that's theta, okay? So that's one way to do it using law signs. You can also do this using law cosines, so let me just show you that. So law cosines, remember, 
I'd have it this way where beta forms that side. So 2.63 squared, right, is equal to 5.32 squared minus 5.87 squared, I'm sorry, plus 5.87 squared minus 2 times 5.32 times 5.87 cosine of beta. So in this one, all right, you have this squared, the, the angle I'm working with, the side it, form, the, it forms, that squared is equal to this squared plus this squared minus two times this, this cosine of beta. So what makes that a little harder is you're finding, so if I set all of that up, I get this. I'm looking for my angle. So remember, I'm trying to get rid of all these numbers. So this one's being added, even though it's not written there, there's a little plus sign there, right? So you're gonna have to subtract it from both sides and then subtract this from both sides. That's how you get the 2.63 squared minus the 5.32 squared minus the 5.87 squared. That will equal all of this stuff, which is being, which is multiplying times the cosine of beta. So I'm gonna to wanna to divide then, right? Since this is multiplied, I do it by dividing. You're gonna divide by negative two times 5.32 times 5.87, right? So there it is there. Now I did specifically put these uh, parentheses or brackets in red to let you know that to, to go put this in my calculator I want to make sure the numerator is separated from the don denominator using parentheses and so you'll get this number here 0 0.894096 that's what cosine beta is then you take the inverse cosine of both sides and guess what of course you get the same answer 26.6 degrees which is what we got before 26.6 degrees and now you just do the theta or you're subtracting from 42.7 and you get the same answer, 16.1. Right, so there you go. That's the application of log cosines and log sines at one point if you wanted, or, or you could do it all log, log cosines, but it's very cool because this is all, you know, being able to measure indirectly, right, and all that, because this you could measure directly, this you could probably measure directly, this we wouldn't, right, you wouldn't. So it, it's, it's uh, practical, like let's say you haven't tunneled through yet and you wanna know, well, how much would I have to tunnel, <laughs> right? And so then you'd, you'd know the angle you'd need, right? The angle from the horizontal and all that and how far you'd have to go. So all that's really practical. All right, thank you so much for listening.